Hi everyone. Today Salesforce training, admin training day 39. Today's agenda will be, we'll be quickly go through the previous session overview and we'll talk about the use case of the auto launch no trigger. Then we will talk about the flow best practices and flow orchestration. We have another sixth one, which is called as a flow orchestration. Today we will see flow orchestration and overview of the flow orchestration. What are the benefits of using the flow orchestration? And when to use the flow orchestration? What are the points that we need to consider when we are building the flow orchestration? What are the few consideration limitations when we are building the flow orchestration? And then we'll have a conclusion trial head lease. Now, last class, we were discussing about the trial uh, auto launch. And then I have given the assignment. Right? So the assignment is creating the task whenever the account is created, just create the task with the details, whatever I'm providing the details here. I see that one member has done it. What about others? I have received the assignment that is still 36 or yeah, till 36 I have received it. Few members have sent the assignment, 32 to 36. Previous sessions, uh, assignments they have sent. But how about the yesterday one? Yesterday one I have seen only one person has done it. Apart from that person, anybody else has done the assignment? At least tried the assignment. Okay. So Vasavi from you, I have received a 32 to 36. But yesterday session, I have not received it. Ma'am, I didn't get the document ready. So I will, I will send by today. Okay. How about others? Offline, did you guys try it at least? How many members tried it? If you tried it, there is a some something which is there, you would have asked the question there. Okay. Suman send me the email. So it is difficult right now, but send me the email. How about others? We have total 35 members. Nobody has tried it implementing this flow. Okay, so you guys are going to try it or should I repeat this? Should I explain? Okay, but what about this? Like, should I need to explain today or should you guys are going to try it? I will not give the complete explanation. I'll just give the auto launch flow. What are the things that we have to do it? So I'll just explain it those. Okay, fine. Then it is fine. So let me go to the paint. You guys try it. I'll just explain here. 
So you know the record trigger. So auto launch trigger, what you need to do is you will have a start of the auto launch, right? So you will have a start of the auto launch. So this is auto launch, the one which is going to try here. Auto launch flow. So when you are trying the auto launch flow, here it is going to ask you the select the element. So what is the scenario here? Whenever the account is created, so you need to create the task. So in that case, you need to use an element here in the auto launch. This element is get account details. Get account details. Now, what are, what are you going to get the details here? You have to get the account details. You have to get the account details. You have to get the account details. Account details where ID equal to, you need to pass the account ID. For this flow, you need to pass the account ID. Right, so that means you need to have a resource variable. You need to have a resource variable. So account ID is resource variable. This is resource variable. So this resource variable, either you have to pass the ID here, account ID, or else whoever is calling this auto launch flow, they have to pass the account ID. So that is the get one. Now, after that we have a next one is once I get the details, the second one is I need to create a task. I need to create a task. That means you need to use the element here, which is a create, which is a create a record element. Create a record element, you have to use it. In the create record element, you have to, what you have to do, you have to create a one task. For that particular one, you have to create a task here. And while creating the task, while creating the task, what you have to do, you have to enter all these details. Like you need to select the field, which is a subject. Subject is your field. And the field value is, let's say, call. Field value is call. Now, what is other field, other information? We have a due date. We have a due date. So due date is basically, instead of due date, let's say activity date. Activity date. Now, for this activity date, what you have to do is take the today's date, whatever the task you are creating it, take the today's date, you have to concatenate the seven. You have to concatenate the seven. That means today plus seven days. Today plus seven days. Now, how you are going to create this? It will not accept directly while creating the task here. While creating the task today plus seven, you cannot directly add it, right? So here, what you need to do is you need to create a separate resource for this. For this, you need to create a separate resource. What is that resource? Resource is formula field you have to create it. Formula field you have to create it. Now in this formula field, you have to take the, which is available flow.current date. Flow.current date. And then plus seven. You have to take plus seven. And refer that formula field here in the activity date. Now, there are a few more details I need to enter in the task while creating the task. The next field is description. Description, you take it from the account. Here we have an account, right? So account dot description. Whatever the description is available in the account, for that account description, take in the task and create it. And Next one, we have a owner ID. In the task, we have a owner ID. 
So whenever we are creating a task in the Salesforce, whenever we are creating the task, let me go to the account. In the account, click on it, new account. And here you have an activity, right? So here, basically what, when you click on this, what is happening here, it is coming as a new task. So whatever this new task is there, this new task, you are creating it from the flow. So subject, we have a status and you can keep that there are a few fields are there, which is not displayed here. Description, these all are, we are creating it from the flow. So description is the one and next we have a owner ID. Owner ID pass it as a account. Account, what are the previous account details are there? That account dot owner ID. That account dot owner ID. And you need to specify the priority. Priority equal to high and the status equal to not started. Status equal to not started. Now the next one, it is going to ask you that there is a something field called. Apart from this, it will ask you one more field you will see while creating the task, which is called as a what ID, which is called as a what ID. Whenever you are creating a task, you will see this field called what ID. It will ask you that what ID. The field name itself is a what ID. The field name itself is a what ID. Now here, whenever it asks, now what should I need to provide it? What should I need to provide it? So here, there are two types of a IDs will be there. There are two types of IDs. Now, if you go to the task object, now let's go to the object, edit object, and let's open the object called task. Click on the object manager. Here is the task object. Inside the task object, go to the fields and relationship. Now you will see something called here. Let me switch to the classic. Setup and task, task fields. Okay, so they have removed it from here. Okay. We have a something called what ID and who ID. There are Two are there. One is what ID and who ID. In Salesforce, sometimes you see what ID and who ID. What ID and who ID, you will see this. Right. So here is the who and here is the what. Here you have a who and here it is what. Now, in different, whenever you are creating a task, Whenever you are creating a task, there are two fields are there, which is a what ID and who ID. What ID and who ID. Now, what is this what ID and who ID? How do I know that what is like whenever we are selecting here subject, I know that I need to leave the subject there. If I have a field name called as a description, I know that I have to provide the description. Owner ID, I know that I have to provide the some owner ID there. But when it talks about the what ID and who ID, what should I need to provide the information there? Now here, let's understand. First of all, here, who ID. In simple terminology, if you have to remember who ID and what ID. In simple terminology, if you want to remember who ID is used for the human object. Used for the human object. It is used for the human object. 
When I say human object, I'll talk about the human object, what I mean by human object. Now, this is what ID is per non-related. It's not a related to the human. It's not related to the human. Now, here, who ID is related to the human object. When I say human object, where is the details of the person? Person details are in the contact. Person details are in the lead. Right? So, whenever you are creating a task, whenever you are creating a task, now, in case if you want to provide the person, person details, then person details will be in the, wherever you have a person details, then you, that record ID, you have to provide it in the who ID. Now, simple example, like let's suppose um, you have a Salesforce event. You have a Salesforce event. When the Salesforce event is happening, when the Salesforce is event is happening, you need to track the meetings with the client. So whoever is going to present the uh, present the demo or give the sessions, what we have to do is we need to track the what are the meetings we have it and how many meetings we have it. Everything we need to track it. Now here, your user want to make sure that they they populate the field with a lead or a contact. Who are the leads? Who are the contact that we are receiving for this meeting? Now, is it possible to have a multiple contacts and lead associated with an activity? Like a activity, if you have a shared activity enabled, or in that case, for example, you wanted to track the who all are the people coming to the event or who are really interested, the leads, right? If you wanted to get those information if you want to get those details if you want to track all the leads or all the contacts or all the users who are coming to the event if you want to track the details so that field is called as a who id who id is basically it is a name field it is a name field on the activity related object it is a name field who id is nothing but name field Whereas what ID, what ID is basically it's a non-human related, non-human related. That means what ID is basically it refers to the object. This is used for the object. Now, which object type that I can use it here? Now, what ID is used for the multiple other object? This is used for the multiple multiple other objects that are not human related not human related and you will see mostly the label name is related to on the same object whenever you have a multiple other object which is not related to the human now, when I say not related to the human, now what ID is represent? It talks about the account. It talks about the account ID, opportunity ID, campaign ID, campaign ID, case ID, or any custom object ID. Right? If you want to refer the account ID. Now, why here it is asking the what ID? Because whenever you are creating a task, Whenever you are creating a task, you need to link the account to the task. You need to link the account to the task. That means related object details. That means related object details, which is a related to, related to. What it is happening, it is look up to contact, order, campaign, account, opportunity, all the custom objects or standard objects, except the uh, contact, lead, user, except those. We have a, all other objects, whatever the objects are there, those I wanted to link to the task. Those I wanted to link to the task. So what ID is the API name for the relate to field. Whenever you see what ID, it is a API name. This is the, for what ID, you will have a API name, which is called as a relate to. Relate to is the field. For the relate to field, API name is what ID. Now here, for relate to field, this is the field. 
for this relate to field what id is the api name whereas who id is the api name for the name where it will report to the contact and lead where it is report to the contact and lead not even the user it is going to report to the contact and lead now here what id is basically it is the api name for the relate to field on the activity related object right now whatever the activity we have it now if you go to the salesforce now we have a different type of activity create a task and the chart and the meeting whatever the meeting is there right email so what are the activities that we are doing it here for there we have a relate to field for that relate to field api name is a what id and this field is associated to the many different objects apart from this contact and lead those are account opportunity campaign case and if you have any custom object you can go for that custom object right in in sometimes in the interview also they will ask you what is the difference between the what id and the who id so simply remember who is nothing but it is representing the person representing the person representing the human so who id is mostly used to refer the contact and lead contact and lead now what id is nothing but what id what right so what id is nothing but all other apart from those who id objects all other objects we can refer in the what id now here which object do i need to refer here what id what id i need to refer the account because i'm planning to create a task in the within the account and once i create the task i need to link that task to the account so in that case we use the what id equal to account id what id equal to account id so that is the concept that you can see in the while creating the task while creating the task now once this is done then finally we have a end solution here finally we have end solution right so that's all you have to this is what you have to implement in the auto launch this is what you have to implement in the auto launch in summary definition if somebody asks you the what is what id who id in summary definition is who id is used for human objects if anybody is taking the notes take it which are contact and leads right and it is labeled as name labeled as a name on the task and event object you will see on these two object where is a what id is used for multiple other objects multiple other objects that are not human related that are not human related and it is labeled as relate to on the task and event object and this is the definition please take notes of it now done okay so let's move on the next one is flow best practices so far whatever we have learned the flow 
what are the best practices now, whenever you are implementing the flow always test your flow before deploying to the production always test your flow before deploying to the production not only the production wherever you are deploying it you might be deploying to the another sandbox test your flow and never perform the dml statement in the loop never never perform dml statement in loops never perform the dml statements in the loop now whenever you are implementing the flow document your flow what is the steps are happening inside the flow you have to document how you are going to document you have to document in the either you need to add a description in the what are the element you are adding it there add the description each element should have a description as well as you need to document your flow in the confluence page in the real time uh, company will be providing a place where you need to document it so few companies provide the space in the confluence page or few members few companies will say that document in the board pad whatever the board pad is there you can document into the board or else you have to create a one drive and then you have to share those details right so or you have to create a pdf format then you have to share those documents to the whoever is the available and we never hard code whenever you are implementing the flow never hard code the ids ids or a api names never hard code it it is so difficult to track it later so difficult to make the changes on the flow later and whatever the flow you are implementing it make sure you have a error fault is available wherever the you feel that the possibility is there while implementing or while executing this flow the error might happen in this element if you know that at the fault path there at the fault path and utilize the sub flows for a clearance or a reusability or scalable ways to manage the flows wherever you have it you can manage those flows so always try to use the sub flow instead of implementing the very big flow use the divide this for example you have a very big scenario to implement a flow i would suggest divide your flows and create a smaller smaller chains of flows and then call the flows from the another flow so using the sub flow what will happen is it's it will be easy to maintain and it is easy to scalable where is exactly the change is happening easy to maintain and scalable and if you want to modify anything you need not to touch entire flow simply you need to change the small flow what are the sub flow is there so that's the reason salesforce is always suggest to use the sub flows and do not forget to check the null or empty always check the condition conditions are very important null or empty result in the decision element before acting as a set of the records or you are performing some action in that case please check the condition null or empty and whenever you are implementing the flow what is the field level security whether the end user has the uh, field level read edit credit access is available or not so you need to cross check that means you need to run it as a user level you need to run it as a user level so we need to always check that field level security so these are the couple of best practices in the real time whenever we are implementing the flow we will consider all these eight points while implementing the flow take a notes of it
completed. Should not update the recording group. Yes. So that's the reason we have a one element is called assignment. Right? Before updating any record, what you have to do is you have to put that into the assignment. You have to put that into the assignment. Assignment is nothing. Assignment element is nothing. But as I have explained previously, the records are sitting in the queue. Now, once all the updates are done in the assignment, now you can pass finally the assignment element to the update element. Okay. Next, let's move on to the flow orchestration. Now, this is the new flow which is released in the, uh, I think last year it has released flow orchestration. Before it was there, it was there, but it was there as a beta version. It was there as a beta version. Beta version is nothing but developers can try doing it. Developer can try using the this flow orchestration, but do not give it to client. Do not give it to client. This is only for the developers to practice it. It was available, flow orchestration was available as a beta version. And the beta version is specifically, it is developers. What are the developers are there? That means here, whenever it says beta version is nothing, but there is a plan for Salesforce. If they might give you they might give you in future. Before that, developer has to be used to this flow orchestration. Used to be. They want, that means Salesforce is going to give us some time because this is completely new for everybody, right? It is completely new for everybody. Now, nobody was aware of flow orchestration. Normally flows were there. Normally flows were there, but nobody was aware how to use the flow orchestration. So what Salesforce has given is, for some time they made it as a beta version. And after that, when they hear from the developers, like this is okay, uh, we can try it kind of a, like a 50 50 percent they have received it so many members did not try much about the flow orchestration they did not focus on it few members they said that okay we can go for it not that much so what they have done is in the spring 22 release in the spring 22 release in the spring 22 they have released completely they said that right now flow orchestration is available, generally available, generally available. Beta is nothing but, you can try it, but it is not available. GA is nothing but generally available, where a developer can start implementing it, where a developer can start implementing it and can provide the clients. We can provide the flows to the clients also. We can start implementing it. So this was the history behind that flow orchestration. Now here, whenever you say orchestration, observe this. What is the generic meaning of orchestration? What is the generic meaning of orchestration? In generic, normal, what is mean by orchestration? So orchestration is nothing but math, okay? What about our, yes, few more. So basically orchestration is nothing but a planning. Planning or execution in order. Execution in order or arrangements, arrangements, we are doing the arrangement properly, step by step we are going to the arrangement, right? 
or coordinating with the different members in order to execute the complete flow. Now you have a very big event. You have a very big event. There is a very big event is there. Now nowadays the event is like a marriage event, which is a very big, right? Now for this, it's a very complicated event. It is a very complicated event. There are so many things are involved in this event. So many things are involved in this event. Now, we have to plan step by step. So usually, traditionally, if you go in India, traditionally, it is like a 20 days of uh, event. Traditionally, if you go for it. So 20 days of event or a 15 days of event. Now that 15 days, what should happen on each day? Everything has to be arranged properly. Everything has to be arranged in properly. There has to be have a plan. There has to be have a plan. There is a before 15 days, there is a pre-plan will be there. And during the plan also, there is a, some execution will be there, right? So it, it has to, there is a lot of members are involved. If you see here, a lot of members are involved in order to prepare the, in, in order to execute the event. Similarly, we have a lot of users. There are so many users are involved in this event. And so many steps are involved. So many steps and so many stages are there. Especially we have a different stages in this event. Like there is a different names we have it during this event. There is a different stage. For each stage also, there are different steps which we have to perform it. Each stage, we have to perform it different steps. Now, in one stage, like, uh, I don't know what it's called, but there is a, some stage where we have to uh, make the bride or some, some kind of a arrangement which we have to do it. Right In that stage, on that day, stage is nothing but on that day, Early morning should happen this one and afternoon should happen this one. Evening should happen this one. So that means per stage also we have a different steps, steps are there, right? Now, whenever there is a multiple users or multiple stages or multiple steps are involved and if it is a complicated event, then we will go for a flow orchestration. Then we will go for a flow orchestration. Flow orchestration is nothing but flow orchestration is nothing but it is a an arranged aggregation of a flow. It is a aggregation of the flow. Or you can say that flow orchestration is a planning or combining together. Whatever we have seen so far, screen flow, auto launch flow, we have seen it, right? Those are individual flows. Those are individual flows. Now combine all those, combine all those, plan the big event and execute it. So flow orchestration is an aggregation flow. And whenever we say flow orchestration is, it is basically combination of screen flow and auto launch flow. Combination of screen flow and auto launch flow, no trigger. Combining these two, we can e implement a planning or we can implement an execution where multiple users are involved, where multiple stages are involved, where multiple steps are involved. Whenever you have this kind of a scenario, we will go for a flow orchestration. Now Salesforce allows the customer to use the power of flow orchestration to create a multi-user, multi-stage, multi-step. Multi-user, multi-stage, multi-step. So for that purpose, we, they have introduced the flow orchestration. For that purpose, they have introduced the flow orchestration. Now flow orchestration always runs after trigger, after trigger. Now we have a record triggered flow, right? Flow orchestration is also similar to the record triggered flow. Where you, whenever you are creating the flow orchestration, you want it will ask you that do you want to execute this flow orchestration, orchestration during the creation of the record or create and update the record or deleting the record. It is similar to the record triggered flow, but record triggered flow is a smaller flow orchestrations are used for the, where it is involved for the multiple users are involved in this entire flow. I need a 
I have a Salesforce event. In that Salesforce event, I have a multiple users are involved. There are different stages are there. That event is going to happen for almost three days, right? The event is uh, Salesforce event is for three days. Now, in that three days, now each stage there are different steps are has to be happened in order to uh, entertain the users, in order to entertain the developers. Now, in that Salesforce event, we have a developers, we have a architect, we have a uh, end users, we have a juniors, we have a who are looking for the jobs, different kind of a users are there. Now, everybody, we have to entertain them. Now, I cannot focus on only the new job members. I cannot focus on the end user. Now, that time developers feel bored and they will give you the wrong feedback. So what is here, we need to make sure that multiple users are entertaining on the different stages or different steps. So those kind of a big events or whenever you have a complicated scenarios, then you will go for the flow orchestration. Flow orchestration runs always after trigger and even after trigger also action is whenever the record is created or whenever the record is updated or whenever the record is created or updated or record is deleted. Record is deleted. Take a note of it. Okay, completed. Now, in detail, if I go into the flow orchestration, now let's see the structure of it. Whenever we are implementing the flow orchestration, now normal flows, how it is, normal flows are, it is starting like this. Now I can add one element here and I can add another element here. If it is a decision, we have a yes condition, we have a no condition. This is normal flow. But when it comes to the flow orchestration, when it comes to the flow orchestration, let's see the, the, uh, the structure or the flow of the orchestration. Now, in the flow orchestration, on top level, we have a orchestration flow, which is a record trigger flow. Below that, you have a two type of, it is divided into the orchestration is divided into the stages where you can create a multiple stages. This is on top level, then below you have a different stages. Below you have a different stages. Now within the stage, you can create a multiple steps. You can create multiple steps. For stage one, you can create a step one, step two, and stage two also you can create a step one and step two. It is possible that only stage one has a step one, step two, and stage two does not have the step one, step two. It is possible that stages may have a step, stages may not have a steps. Or it is possible that both the stages have a steps. Both the stages have a steps. Now here we need to, this is the on top level, the orchestration, and then we have a within below that we have a stage and then stage two and then within below that stage one is step one step two and stage two is also step one step two now within this step one step two within this step one step two flow is divided into the two types background step interactive step background step interactive step so steps can have a background and interactive so like a step one is having a background and interactive. Step two is also having a background and interactive step. Step one is having a background and step one does not have it. Step two is having the background and interactive step. That means 
Now here on top level, you have a flow orchestration. You have a flow orchestration. This is flow orchestration. Flow orchestration. Now below that, it is having a stages. Now you can create a one stage or multiple stages. It is up to you. Now if you want to create a multiple stages, you can create a multiple stages. Or else if you want, for example, I wanted to create a one stage here. I want to create a one stage. Now here I'll be creating the stage. Now here we have a stage. Let's say that this is a stage one. This is the stage one. Within the stage one, we'll have a different steps. We have a different steps. Step one, step two, like that you can create it. Now, what is this step one, step two is nothing but now within the stage, when I say step one, now here in the step one, we have a multiple options. Step one is nothing but which flow do I need to schedule it here? Now here I can call the screen flow. I can call the screen flow, which is nothing but a background step, which is nothing but a sorry, interactive step. Screen flow is nothing but a interactive step. Screen flow is nothing but interactive step. Now step two is auto launch flow. Auto launch flow. Now this is, it runs in the background. So that's the reason it is called as a background step. Background step. Along with this, recently they have released the new soft also. They have released the new soft. That is a different part together. New soft is a different here. Now for this flow, what we have step one, step two. What is that means step one, step two is nothing but I can select a multiple lightning flows in the single stage. In the single stage, I can select a screen flow and auto launch flow. I can select screen flow and auto launch flow. Now these are the multiple steps. When I say screen flow, it is an interactive step. When, you, when I say auto launch, no trigger flow, that means it is a background step. This is no trigger flow. It's a background step. Now this is one stage. Now similarly, below this, you wanted to create a more stages. You wanted to create more stages. Now what you will do, you will, you will, now here, now this side one stage I'll create it. I'll create one stage and the other side also I'll create another stage. That means below this stage one, below this stage one, I have a two stages. I have a two stages. Now here, this is the one stage two and this is the stage three. This is the stage three. This is the stage two. So this is a stage three. Stage three. Now here also what you can do is you can call the screen flow or a screen flow is nothing but interactive flow. Inter you can call the interactive flow or else you can call the background step. You can call the background step. Interactive step or a background step. Right, you can call any of this. Similarly, here also in stage, you can call the interactive step or a background step. You can call any one of them. And below that, if you want to create another stage, you want another stage, you want below another stage, you want to create it. Now you can create another stage here below. Now let's say that stage is stage four. It is stage four. Now in this stage four, you can call another different steps you can call it. Now this is the stage four. Here also what you can do, you can call the interactive step or a background step.
interactive step or background step. Interactive step or background step, you can call it. Right, so this is how we implement. Now, what is this? So assume that this is a first day, second day, third day, fourth day. Now you can do this. Now stage one is this one. After the stage one is completed, what is the stage two? In between, if you want to add a decision, you can add a decision also. In between, if you want to add a decision, you can add a decision also. Now here the decision is, if the decision says that, okay, let's add here decision. Now you have some decision. Based on the decision, you want to execute the either stage three or stage two. Now, if it is a yes, then it will go this side. If it is no, then it will go this side. Now, once it is completed, then it will end the flow here. Orchestration flow will end here. This is mostly for the very complicated scenarios we will implement the flow orchestration. This is how your structure looks like a flow orchestration. Flow orchestration stage, step one, step two, and again you have a stage, step one, step two, again you have a stage, step one, step two, again you have a stage, you have a different steps. Right, so here possible that at the stage one or a stage two or stage three, whenever you need a multiple users, right, you need to involve multiple users here. In that case, you can involve the multiple users in any point of the stage. In any stage, you can include the different users. Now here, I need a different user. Here, I need a different user. In stage one, I need a user one to be involved. In stage two, user two needs to be involved. In stage three, user four needs to be involved. In stage four, user five needs to be involved. Now, in that case, what you can do is you can create this entire flow. While creating it, you can specify the user, the user one to be involved, user two to be involved, user three to be involved, user four to be involved. Now, here, what is happening in entire flow? We have a multiple users are involved. Multiple users are involved. Now, this is how we implement the flow orchestration. This is how we implement the flow orchestration. Now, flow orchestration is having a two types of these steps. One is the interactive step. Second one is a background step. Interactive step and background step. When an on when an orchestration runs an interactive step, the designed user receives the whoever is designated user is there because I have mentioned the user there. So whoever is the designated user will, is there, that user will receive an email with a link to their assigned action. Whatever the assigned action is there, they will receive an email. The assigned user has to click on the link to go to that particular record where they complete their action and the work guide, whatever the work guide is expected, they have to complete that work guide and so that the the, that particular stage will be completed. Interactive stage step in within this stage will be completed. And the background step is nothing but background step executes and launches the flow that executes by the system or a requires no user interaction. Background step itself is a auto launch no trigger where it is does not require the user interaction. But what will happen is it automatically launches and whatever the execution needs to be happen it will happen the execution. Whereas in the interactive step, if the users are involved there, now that user will receive an email, that user has to click on that record and perform the work guide. Work guide is nothing but it's a steps they have to perform it. Once they have done with the steps, then it has to be written back to the next user. So this is entire flow. Now anybody is taking the notes, please take the notes.
from data taken the notes. Okay. Also take the diagram of this. Completed. Okay, so let's move on. So for example, right now what I'll do is let's go to the sales force. And let's go to the close. And click on the flow. Click on here new flow. Next one is record triggered flow orchestration. Record triggered orchestration. Click on here, create. Now, record trigger orchestration is at the first, it will give you the record trigger orchestration and it will ask you to enter the object. On which object you are creating the record? Let's take the account object. Whenever the account is created. Now that's it. I do not have any other information. I just need to specify the object name, whether the account is created or updated, or whether it is a created or updated. Now, here I do not have an option like before trigger or after trigger. I do not have. Here, option is only on the after trigger, the flow orchestration, the record trigger orchestration executes at the after trigger. Now close this. Now let's save this. Save the. Let's say that this name is a account orchestration record orchestration. Now click on save button. The next step which I am going to create it is. Now here record orchestration, record record orchestration is started and below that I need to create a, a stage. I need to create a stage. Now let's say here click on this plus button. Click on this plus button and it will ask you two options. Do you want a stage or do you want a decision? It will not give you anything. Now, one more thing remember, using the record trigger orchestration, we are not going to build a flow. I'm not going to build a flow here. Using the record orchestration, we are not going to build a flow. So here in a normal flow, get records, create records, write update records, write all those things which can be done. 
But whereas in the flow orchestration, only two things which I can do. I cannot create a flow. I can just use the stage or I can use the decision. I am not going to update a record, create a record, delete a record, uh, collection sort, collection filter. I cannot use any of this. I cannot use any of this. In the stage, I'll have a only stage and a decision. Because that create a record, update a record, or uh, what are the collection sort, collection filter, screen flow, whatever it is there, that is a very low level work. Orchestration is used for the big events, very big events or a complicated scenarios we use it. Now here, there are two options, which is given stage and decision. I'm going to select a stage. I'm going to select, select a stage on the account level. For example, I'm selling something, right? Uh, let's say that we are selling the, I'll give it here upsell. I'll give the name as a upsell. Now, when that is just a label name, and here, if you observe, select when to complete the step. Because within this stage, we will have a different steps. We will have a different steps. Now, usually, it is asking the system that, it is asking the developer, now, when do you want this orchestration should complete it? When all the steps have been marked, complete the stage is a mark. When the all the steps, whatever the steps are there, when all the steps have been marked, complete. Now, whatever the steps are there within the stage, all the steps are completed. Then only you want the stage to be completed because when this stage is completed, when this stage is completed, then only it can go down. When this stage is completed, execution of this is completed, then only it can go down. Whenever this stage is completed, then only it can go down. When it is asking that, when do you feel that this stage is completed? Now you have a two steps here. You have a two steps here. Now when do you think this stage is completed? Do you want all the stage, whatever the stages are, what are the steps are there within the stage? If all the steps are marked as a complete, then only do you want stage to be marked as a complete. Now, out of these two steps, assume that this step is completed perfectly fine. This step is having an issue. Now, in that case, I do not want my stage to be completed. I do not want my stage to be completed. Now, I want both the steps are executed perfectly fine without any error then only I want to make this stage to be completed. I want this stage to be marked as a completed. Do you want to do that or else? When the specified evaluation flow returns true, that means you have a two steps. Out of these two steps, if you see that any flow is completed, any step is completed, then you wanted to make it as a stage is completed. Right, so these two steps are there. Now, one, as soon as this step is completed, now make this stage as a completed. If you want that scenario, so it is giving the two types of it. When it is second one, it is there, you need to click on the evaluation flow. Right, you have to click on the evaluation flow. Now, what is that evaluation flow? We will see that. Okay, so for now, we are going to select the first one. When the all the steps have been marked as a complete, then the stage is marked as a complete. This is the one which I needed. Now observe here, you do not have a save button for this level. You have a save button at the top level. So you just once you are done with updating it, just click on the cross button. Now you are done with creating the stage. You are done with creating the stage. Click on the save button. Now I have clicked on the stage button. Now I, I have created the stage. Now within the stage, click on the add step. When you click on the add steps, here it has a three steps are available. Background step, interactive step, new soft step, right? So background step is nothing but auto launch no trigger. Interactive step is nothing but screen flow. Mule soft step is nothing but where you need to call the mule soft action, which is a altogether different. Right? So, if it is possible, we will see in the integration time. 
But right now we will see background step and the interactive step. Background step, interactive step. Now let's say that I want the interactive step. I want the interactive step. In the interactive step, as soon as you select the interactive step, at the right side, it is going to give me a couple of options. Now, first it is asking the label API name. What should be the name of this interactive step? And the next it is asking that select when to start the step. When do you want to start this step to execute it? Because we have multiple steps are available. Now, as soon as the stage is started, do you want to execute this step or else? When another step is marked complete, then you wanted to start the step or else. When the specified evaluation flow returns true, then you wanted to execute this step. So there are three conditions. Now the condition says, as soon as I start this stage, I wanted to start this flow or else. After this step is completed or after this step is completed, first I wanted to execute the background step. First execute this background step, after that only execute the screen code or else evaluation criteria. So there is the evaluation flow is there. If the evaluation returns true, then we have to start the step. These are the three conditions which are available. Next one, it is asking the action. Next one, it is asking the action. Action is nothing but where you can call the flows. Where you can call the flows. We have it, it is going to display the screen flow. It is going to display the all the screen flows. Whatever the screen flows that we have created so far, all the screen flows it is going to display here. And the next one is select someone to complete this action. Now, who is the user that you needed here in order to complete this specific step? Now, choose that user. You can choose the single user here. So, use the user or you want to choose the user resource or you wanted to choose the group of the members. You wanted to choose the group of the members or you wanted to choose the group resource or you wanted to choose the queue. In the queue also we have a different users or a queue resources. We have a different resources are available in the queue resources. So those all members, you need to choose it, right? And the next one is a select where to, where, where to complete this action. Select where to complete this action. That means it is asking that condition when to complete this action. When the assigned user has completed the screen flow, then the step is marked as a complete. When this assigned user is there, he has completed this step, then make it as a complete. The second option is when the specified evaluation flow is true, then step mark it as a complete. Right, so these are the steps which are available. Now here, interactive step is expecting the screen flow. Now what I'll do is I'll simply, I'll just implement a one flow, which is a very basic flow, screen flow. Very basic screen flow. I'm not going to add any screens there. I'm not going to add any screens there. Okay, so I, I just added some random text information in this screen flow, right? I'm not going to add any fields or some, something. So for example, here it is a screen flow. In the screen flow, I'm adding a screen flow. Now let's say that here I just display the text. I just display the text. Display text. Now in the display text, I've mentioned here this is screen one. This is screen one. Right. Uh, let's say use this page to create selling checklist. Right, so this is what I'm creating it. API name of this is a screen one. Screen one. And let's keep the name for the screen property also. This is screen one. Let's say this is screen one. Okay, and then that's it. This is 
first screen. Now after that, I'll add another screen so that in step one, this is step one screen. I'll add another screen here, which is a screen two. So in the screen two also, I'll add a display text. Display text. Now let's say that this is a in step one, in stage one, step one, and then this is a screen two. Screen two and use this screen to confirm the selling checklist. Right, so here name, let's keep it as a screen two. Right, this is inside the stage one step. This is a step one. Stage one, step one, screen two. Click on that. Now in the screen one, I'll say here, and screen one. Click on done. Now let's save this. This is a, let's keep it as a flow one. Let's say activate it. Now this is the flow one. Now let's go to the orchestration. Let's refresh this. Now click on the add step. In the add step, I'm going to add the interactive step. Interactive step. In this interactive step, I'm going to specify the label name. Let's assume that label name is a selling checklist. Selling checklist. Right, the condition which I'm going to specify here, when the stage is starts, the step is also starts. Action, I'm going to provide the flow one, the one which we have created right now. And in case if the flow is expecting any input parameter, it is going to show you the input parameter here. Now assigning user, but now I'm giving the assigning user as whatever uh, April batch is there, I'm giving that assigning. Now here, related record ID, which related record ID? Now, where to complete this action? Who is that related record ID? Now, related record ID is we have on top level record record flow, right? So that record I'm going to take it. So record is account, account dot ID, account dot ID, which is a my related record ID. That is my related record ID. And condition when the assigned user has completed the screen, then step is marked as a complete. Yes, this is what I wanted to specify. Click on done. Let's click on the save button. Now, it is giving here the automated, there is some email address which is incorrect. Now, let me check. So, what is this is, there is an automated process. User has no valid email address. No valid email address. Now, who is the user I have assigned? The user that I have assigned is April Batch. Now, let's go to the setup. Click on here, user. Now, April Batch, what is the email ID it has? Is it a valid or not? Now let's go to the April batch. It has an email ID of Samskar ID. It is a verified. It is verified email ID.
Okay, so that we will see later. That is, don't worry about it. Now it is fine. So let's click on the save button. Now the step one is completed. I wanted to add another step. I wanted to add another step, which is called as an interactive step. Interactive step is nothing but, similarly, it is asking the label API name. Condition, it is asking the same condition. When do you want to execute this step? So once the uh, stage is started, do you want to execute or when another is marked as a step, marked as a complete. Now, if you say that once it is a step, one is selling checklist, this is completed, then execute this one. Now, in that case, you can say here, when another step is marked as a complete, which one is the another step? Selling checklist is the another step, which is marked as a complete. Now, then you can start it. Or else, if you want to execute it, whenever the stage is started, you want to simply execute the interactive step, you can execute it. Now, here, action, it is going to ask you that, in, no, this is the interactive step. Now, I want the background step. Now let's create a background step. Now here, if you want the same steps are available here also. Now background step, it is going to ask, it is going to give you the auto launch node trigger. What are the auto launch node trigger is there? Those are the records. It is available here. Now if I say that, I'll create a few flows here. Let's say I'm, I'm going to create another flow which is an auto launch flow, which is auto launch flow. Now in the auto launch flow, what I'll do is, on the account level, let's switch to the lightning. So now let's click on the flow. I'll create a, an auto launch flow. Auto launch flow, no trigger created. Let's say what should be created. Let's say I'm I'm updating the account. I'm updating the account. Update a record. Update a record. So this is update account. Now here specify the condition. Uh, on the account object, in the account object, let's say that wherever the ID equal to account ID. Now, account ID, I need to pass the resource from the outside, right? So let's say this name is account ID and data type has to be text and it is a input variable. Now, if ID is equal to that particular account ID, then what I need to update is we have a one field on the account which is called as an active field. So active field equal to yes. So this is my auto launch flow. This is my auto launch flow. I'm simply updating one field here. On the I'm updating the record. What I'm updating here, which are the account ID is equal to this account ID. I need to pass it from the outside. Outside of this flow, I need to pass the account ID. So whatever the ID is equal to that particular account ID, update that active checkbox for that account, we have a checkbox called active. Now if you go to the account, go to the account detail list, we have a field called active. We have field called active. This is a text box, uh, this is a pick list, right? So I'm choosing it here, active equal to yes, click on done. Now let's say that this is a background step. Click on save. And let's activate it. Now I can call this flow from the orchestration flow. From here, I can call this flow. Click on reload. Right, so one step in the stage, we have a one step and adding the another step, which is a background step. Now background step is, let's say that this is the Let's say this is also background. Execution. This is my label. 
background execution is the label and the condition is as soon as the state is executed i wanted to execute the background step what is the action i wanted to call the flow that i have created which is a background step now here it is expecting the account id now i can pass the account id the above we have a record record, record dot we have a id now that id i can pass it which is the account id i am passing the variable account id to the auto launch trigger which is a background step now click on that now this is the first one record orchestration stage step one step two stage step one step two now further if you want to create more further if you want to create more let's click on a save button further assume that you wanted to create a more now here what i'll do is i'll in the account in the account we have a field called annual revenue let's take a annual revenue whenever the annual revenue is greater than 10000 whenever the annual revenue is greater than 10000 i wanted to execute one stage when it is less than 10000 i wanted to execute another stage right so here condition what i am adding here is if it is a greater than 10000 if the annual revenue is greater than 10000 execute this stage if it is a less than execute this stage execute the stage 3 so that is what i am going to do it now in the flow orchestration click on the plus button it is going to ask you the decision now in the decision you can specify here let's say that the decision i am going to specify here this is account revenue or annual revenue annual revenue now in this annual revenue two things are there one is if the annual revenue let's say here is annual revenue greater than 10k is annual revenue is greater than 10k If it is yes, if it is a yes, it is a greater than 10. That means here yes is nothing but I need to check whatever my record is there. Record annual revenue is greater than 10,000. Greater than 10,000. Now that is the yes condition. Now the second one is by default condition is no condition. By default condition is no condition. Now this is how I created the condition here. Is annual revenue greater than 10k? Is annual revenue greater than 10k or no? Now this is the S condition. This is a no condition. Now in case if it is a S condition, in case if it is S condition, I wanted to add another stage. I wanted to add another stage. Let's say this is a setup SSO stage. Let's assume I'm just giving the name of this setup SSO stage. And execute it when all the steps have marked as a complete, the stage is marked as a complete. Now click on this, say this is the stage two. Whenever it is no, whenever it is no, I wanted to create another stage. Whenever it is no, I wanted to create another stage. Now let's say that this stage is stage three. Stage three and uh, yes, every uh, what are the all the steps are there within this? If all the steps are marked as a complete, stage is also marked as a complete. Now click on it, state. Now we have a decision. If it is a yes, greater than yes, the ten k greater than ten k, then go to here. If it is a less than ten k, go to here. Now in this step, in this step SSO, let's add one more interactive. Now I need to create another flow here. Assume that I need to create another flow. Let's create another flow because it is going to give you the different flows here. 
right? We have a primary contact and different flows are there. So for, for right now, what I'm going to do is I'll just create a, another flow, which is a sample, which is a, assume that it is a sample one. I'm going to create a sample one. Let's go to the flow. Create a new flow. In flow two also. I'll select the screen flow. Now here I'm adding the screen flow. Let's say this is a screen one. And here I'm adding the display text. Display text. In the display text, I'll say that this is screen. This is stage two, step one. This is stage two, step one, screen one. Screen one, and let's say this use this page to set up SSO. Use this page to set up SSO. Click on that. Name is let's say screen one. Click on done. That is first screen. Similarly, I'll create another screen. Now let me copy this. We create another screen, which is a screen two. Screen two. And here I'll display the text. The text is, this is a stage two, step one, screen two. Right? Use this screen. Confirm SS for setup. You confirm SS for setup. Click on done. This is screen two. Click on done. Now let's click on you save. Let's say this is a flow tool. Click on save and activate this flow tool. Now go back to the orchestration. Just refresh the orchestration. Click on the reload. Now go to the decision. Here we are adding the step in the second stage, which is an interactive. In the interactive step, let's say that this is a setup SSO. Now let's say step one of setup SSO. Click on this action. We have a flow to which is created and then user, user is April batch and related record, related record is I'm going to take the record ID. These are repeated steps, whatever we have seen in the previously, I'm just repeating the steps. Click on done. Now, this is the stage one. These are the steps. This is the stage two. In the stage two, we have a step one. Stage two, we have a step one. Similarly, if you want to create a another stage, similarly, if you want to create a another stage, you can create it. Let's suppose here below this, I wanted to create a stage four. I wanted to create stage four. Now in this stage four, if you want to call another one, let's suppose you wanted to call another flow here. Now let's another flow. Let's go ahead and create another flow here, screen flow. Click on a new flow, screen flow. Now here I'm going to create a screen flow. Now this one is screen one. Now display. 
text I'm dragging it here. I'll say here your work. Your work has been completed. Has been completed. You have one more work item. Click on done. Screen one, click on done. Right click on the save. I'm creating another flow, which is this is the flow three. So, so far I have created the three screens. Now the third screen, I'm going to use it in the interactive. Here interactive, it's not displaying the flow three, let's refresh. I have not saved. So let's go ahead and add the step here, interactive step. And whatever previously I have done it, that is gone. I have not saved it. Step one of a setup SSO. And here I'm going to select a flow to user is April batch and related record ID is whatever the record I have it, record.id. I'm selecting the record that ID, click on done. Now this is the step two, now click on save here. Now below I'm adding the one more stage, which is a stage four. Stage four. In the stage four, again I'm adding the interactive step. For this interactive step, let's say that this is the final stage, final step of stage, final step of stage four, stage four. Now here I'm going to call the flow three and the user is April batch and the record related record, I'm going to call the record.account ID. Okay, click on save. Now, I'm going to explain overall again here. Okay, so this is the flow. Now, in this flow, what I have done, this is a record orchestration flow. This is record orchestration flow. It will execute after trigger. Now, what did we mention here whenever the account is created? The criteria which we have mentioned here, whenever the account is created. Now, once the record orchestration is started, then first one we have a stage one. This is a stage one. Stage one. In that stage one, there is a two steps which we have implemented. Step one, this is a step one and the another one is a step two. What is the step one, step two within this stage? In this stage, one interactive and one background step. Now scroll down and here we have created the decision. We have created the decision. Now in this decision, I'm checking the two conditions. What is this condition? If annual revenue is greater than 10K or not. If it is a greater than 10K, execute the stage two. Execute the stage two. Or else, if it is a less than that, then execute the third stage. In the stage two, what I'm doing is I'm calling the only single step. Only single step I'm calling it, which is a interactive, which is a interactive. Now, once this is done, I'm calling the another stage here, which is a stage four, which is a stage four. In this stage four, I'm calling the one step here, which is a final step. One step I'm calling, which is a step one. Now, this is the entire flow. Now, in this entire flow, I created a three interactive flows. Three interactive flows. One flow is flow one is for this one. This is the flow one I have created. 
And second flow which I have created is for the second stage, which is a flow two I have created. And the third one which I have created is for the flow three. Third one I have created for the flow three. These are the three screens which I have created. And then there is a one more flow which I have created is auto launch flow. Auto launch flow. What it is doing is it is simply updating the account active flag to the yes. So this is overall the orchestration flow. This is overall the orchestration flow. Now let me create. Let me activate this. Now let's click on a save button here. Save it. And click on the activate. Click on activate. Once it is active, now what I'll do is on the account page, I'll go to the account record and I'll click on the edit page. I'll click on edit page. Click on this edit page. It will go to the lightning builder. It will go to the lightning builder. In the lightning builder, right in the lightning builder, here search for something called as a flow orchestration work guide. Search for flow orchestration work guide. Simply drag that here. Simply drag that here. Now it has a flow orchestration work guide. Click on a save. Click on save. Now this is done. Let's go ahead and see on the account level. Now what it is saying that you have a no assigned work item for this record. You have a no assigned work item for this record. The reason for this is this orchestration will execute only when the account is created. This execute only when the account is created. This record is already created. So that's the reason it is saying that you have no assigned work item for this record. For this record. Now, whenever we are running the work guide, we call it as a work guide. Whenever we are running the work guide, in the we have a few objects which is related to the orchestration. There are two objects which are there for the orchestration. Orchestration work item. And the other one is called as a orchestration runtime. Now, if you look at the orchestration work item, there is no work item is there. No, all work item. There is no work item is here. Now, if I open the another one, which is called as a orchestration runs. Two objects are by default, Salesforce is providing the two objects. Those two objects is one object is orchestration work item, another object is orchestration runs. So Salesforce is providing the two objects. One is orchestration work item and the second one is orchestration runs. Now what are this? We will see that later. But right now you see here there is no data is available. In the run there is no data. In the item also there is no data. Now what I'll do is I'll create a new account. I'll create new account. Click on this new account. Let's say that account name is orchestration Flow. Orchestration flow. Now here I'll specify here annual revenue is some twenty thousand. So twenty thousand and email is mandatory. Is at the rate gmail.com. 
right? So here I'm not specifying the active flag, but that is blank. Now I have given only the email, annual revenue, and the account name on a save button. I have given the email, which is okay, gmail.com. Click on save. Now, as soon as the it is created, what it is coming here, observe this. Work guide is started. Work guide is started executing it. Orchestration upset. Orchestration upset. So now it is started. The first one is upsell is started. Upsell, the stage one. In the upsell, what we are doing is selling the checklist. Selling the checklist. The screen one in stage one, step one, screen one. Right? In the stage one. This is a stage one. This is stage one. And then this is the step one. In the step one, we have a two screens are there. And right now we are seeing the screen one. Right now we are seeing the screen one. Now it says that use this page to create a spelling checklist. Click on in next. When I click on in next, what will happen? Stage one, step one. Now it is a screen two. In this, it has a two screens. In, in selling checklist, it has a two screens. Now it is showing the second screen. Now, once it is, I click on the finish. That means first step is going to complete it here. First step is going to complete it and it is running the background. Why it is running the background? Because I have a background execution is there. There is a background execution. It executed the background. What is this background is doing? Background is updating the, it is updating the active flag. What are the active flag is there? It is updating the active flag. Now the background is executed. Background is executed. Now what it is doing it? It is giving me the next one which is says that Now where is that flow? Now here it is going to check you have one more work item. Now what is the flow that we are referring here? In the step one, stage one. What is the flow? Flow two. You have a work item is completed. Right, you have a work item will be completed. Click on the got it. Now it is going for the step stage two, step one. It is going for a stage two, step one. First one is completed. Now the next one is, this condition it is cross verified. Then yes condition, it is going for the step two, set up SSO. Set up SSO. In the set up SSO, there are two screens are there. There are two screens. One screen is, Use this page to set up SSO. Click on the next button. And after clicking on the next button, after clicking on the next button, what it is showing? It is showing the second screen. In this step one, set up SSO, I have a two screens. Right? This is the second screen. Click on the finish button. Click on the finish button. Once it is clicked on the finish button, now where it is going that it is your work item is completed. This work is completed. Right, this second step work is completed. Click on got it. Now, final step of the stage. What is the final step of the stage? This is the final step of the stage. Now, every stage is after completing the every stage, you will see that your work item is completed. And now, the final stage, you are done with this. Click on the finish button. Click on it. Finish button. Now everything is getting executed. The work item, whatever is happening in the backend, it gets executed here. Now it will execute. Finally, once all the work guide is completed, it will say that you have no assignment work item for this record. All the stages, steps, multi-user, everything is completed. Now here, multi-user, I have taken my name. 
what are the user is there. So that user I have taken here. Now all the stages are completed. Now, for example, if you want to know what are the items that are completed in this part, what are the items that we have completed in this part? Now, in order to know that, what you need to do is go to the or orchestration work item. Orchestration work item. Now, the first thing is that selling a checklist. That is a selling a checklist. Selling a checklist is the first one. Selling the checklist is the first one. Selling a checklist is the first one. It go here, open that record, selling a checklist. Selling a checklist. Now, when you click on that work item, now here, let's open this. Now, when you click on this, selling a checklist is a completed and it will say here, it will try to execute. Now, if you click on this orchestration flow, what will happen? It will open the actual account, what is happened on this selling checklist. You can check here what is happening in the selling checklist. So orchestration work item will give you the what are the record is there that record and what is the step one step two. What is the step one? All the steps it is going to give us. Now, for example, now let me create a one more record here. Account is let's say new test and I'll give the annual revenue is a 20,000 right email id is okay right so again I'm giving the 20,000 this is to just to show you again now I click on the save record now here there is a it says that work guide is need to be continued. Click on this flow here, work, work item. Right, it says here assigned. It says assigned. Which one? New test, the one which we have created right now. Selling checklist is assigned to this user. April batch is the user. It is used, assigned to this user. Now that user has to go and perform the action. Now when they click on the next button, again refresh this all the work item. So that means we can track what is happening on the orchestration flow. What is happening on the orchestration flow. It still says that assigned, selling checklist assigned. Now I'll go to the new record, I'll click on the finish button. Now let's refresh here. Now it is new test the record is only one record it is displaying here, which is assigned record. Now it says that selling checklist is completed and the next one is assigned. Next one is assigned. Now click on this got it. Now click on the next button. Step one, step SSO we are doing it. Step one, step SSO we are doing it. Now we have clicked on the next button. Now here this step two, stage step one, stage two, step one, screen two gets executed. Now here it says that step one, set up SS1. The second stage is getting executed. We call it finish. It is completed. Now this will assign change to the completed. Who is completed? This assigned user. Whoever is the assigned user is there. That user is completed. Now the next step is assigned to final step. It is assigned to final step. Now, similarly, if I go to the orchestration run, now let me open the orchestration run here. Orchestration runs. Now, what are these running? One is already completed. One is completed. This is the orchestration account. Orchestration is the uh, flow name. Right, and this is the created by person, and this is this is so orchestration run is similar to the scheduled batch, so similar to the schedule, similar to the schedule. It will give you the what is happening, like whether it is in progress, whether it is a failed, or whether it is a started, or whether it is a completed, it will give you the all the details. 
Now it is a schedule. It is a kind of a progress information it will give you in the orchestration run. So completed, the second one is in progress. Which one is in progress here? Whatever the latest one which we have created, this is in progress. Now we are in the final step, click on the finish button. Once we are done with the finish button, it running at the background. Now finally, it will give you that if I refresh this orchestration run, it says that two records are execution is completed. Two record executions are completed. Right, so this is how the orchestration flow is gets executed. This is how your orchestration flow is get executed. For example, now let's go to the orchestration. Now here, now this is the orchestration. Now here, whenever it is a less than 10 p less than 10 p what I wanted to do is I wanted to create another another auto launch flow I wanted to call. Let's say that I wanted to call the background setup. Um, so for background setup, let me create a new flow. So what I'll do is uh, I'll create another auto launch flow. And I'll create another auto launch flow. What is this auto launch flow? Let's say the same example, whatever we have discussed, creating a task. I wanted to create a task. Now here, I'll say that get accounts. I'm going to get the accounts, get record element. Now here, I'm going to pass the, let's say I'm getting the get account details. Get account details. Now here object, I need the account object. Account is the one condition, I need the ID equal to, now I need to pass from the outside the account ID. Let's create a resource here, variable, account ID. The data type is a text and available for input. And this is the condition and I wanted to take one record and automatically store the record, click on done. So once it is a get record is completed, now simply I'm going to assign a task so in order to assign a task, I'll create a create record element. Now let's say here I'm creating a task. Create a task. So one record and let's say separate values I want to take. What I'm going to create a record, task I'm going to create it. As soon as the account is created, task has to be created. Now here I'll say that subject, subject equal to uh, call. This is a text, click on add, and then I'll say what ID, what ID equal to, I wanted to pass the, what are the account ID text I have, I'm going to pass that. And then status, status equal to, let's say it is not started. And also I'll add the priority, priority equal to, let's say high. And then what else we have field is, we have the, let's add owner ID. Owner ID is equal to whoever is the account owner is there. Write that account owner ID. That account. Details start owner. ID. That's the owner ID. Right. These are the information and uh, let's say I'm going to add the activity date. Activity date simply what I'll do is I'll take the flow dot current date. Click on done. Now let's say here. Now this is create a task. Create a task. Click on save. and activate the flow and this flow I'm going to call it in the active uh, account orchestration for the stage three click on the add step let me refresh this now here add step 
for the add step, I'll say interactive step. For this interactive step, I'll say here, create has and this condition as it is. Action, I'm going to use it as not the interactive, I want the background. Background step, create task. Right, so action I'm going to add here, create a task here. I need to pass the input parameter, which is a record dot account ID. Perfect. Click on save. What is this? Let's go and create it once again the background step. Add step. Let me refresh again. In stage three, I wanted to add the step, which is a background step. Let's say this is create task. Right and action, I'm going to use a create task. And here I'm going to pass the record dot ID, whatever the account ID is there, pass that ID. Done. Now save as second version, it gets created. And below that, if you want to add another stage, you can add the another stage. Let's say this is the stage five. Click on the save. Now version two activated. Now flow is activated. Now this time, whenever I cre create a flow, now here I'm going to create a new flow, new account. Let's say that this is the business account and annual revenue is a 5,000. And email address is equal to gmail.com. Click on save. Now, this time, what will happen? The decision condition has to go to stage three. So, the first one is as usual. The first one is stage one is it gets executed. Whatever the stage one is upset, this will get executed. And then this time it is goes to the stage three. Instead of step SSO, it should go to the stage three. Now let's go to the next and click on a finish. It is running the background to update the active flag to yes. It is updated the active flag and it is executing it in the background. And it says that you have no assignment work. You have no assignment work. Why it is the new? We have no assignment work. Because we do not have any screens. We do not have any screens. That those are auto background. This is auto background. But right now it executed the auto background. If I click on refresh. There is a call is created here. Call is created. Now, why it did not show the stage three? Because we do not have a screen here. We just have a background. If you add a screen, if you add a screen, then it is going to show you the screen. It is going to show you the screen. Now it has executed the background and it created the task. Task is the subject is the call. And this is the assigned user. Due date is this one. Activity date. And this you need to add a plus seven in the assignment. Whatever the assignment I have given, you have to add plus seven here. And whatever the name is there, you can add the name also. So this is the task, just know it is limited. So that's all about the flow orchestration. So overview again. Now, whatever the flow orchestration is there, the flow orchestration is created. It's a record from the, uh, it triggered from the record create 
creator update. It's a trigger from record creator or update. There are two types of a component, stages and a steps. Stages can have a multiple steps. Stages have a multiple steps and the steps is a sequence can be controlled. Which one do you want to execute first? And the each step would be another subflow. You can call another subflow. It's like a subflow only. You are calling the first step and then executing the second step. So it's like a subflow only. So subflow can be screen or auto launch flow. You can add it. Now here I have taken as a one screen flow, one interactive flow. It not, it not necessary that you have to go with in one screen flow, one background flow. You can take a both interactive steps also. You can take both background steps also. You can do whatever you wanted. There is not mandatory that first one should be interactive. You can take a first one as a background and second one as an interactive or both of them as a background or both of them as a interactive steps. It is up to the developer how they wanted to build it. And a users, group or a queue can be assigned to the each step. So for the screen flow, whatever the who wants to perform the screen flow, either you can assign the user, you can assign the group or you can assign the queue. And own, owner of the flow steps gets email. So whoever is the owner is there, they get the email. Now in this case, we have we did not have an email because it was giving us the error. Now what was the error it is giving that we cannot send an email because the email is not validated. This we will see tomorrow how to get the email. And then the final is flow component can be added on the page. Any page, like you take any page, user can see assigned work in the tag, which is called as a orchestration work item. Now take a notes of it. Now next step is benefits of the flow we will discuss tomorrow. And when to use the flow orchestration, we'll discuss tomorrow. Take this notes. And again, everybody register the whatever the form is there. Please register that form so that we will be sending the recording sessions or the notes. Whatever I have, sorry, whatever I have implemented today, please practice that. At least you will get this idea. So homework is, I'll leave you later, but whatever I have done it, try to get the knowledge on this. Try to get the knowledge on this, then I can give you another homework tomorrow. But today what I wanted is, so far nobody has done the this kind of a flow, right? So whatever I have explained it, so just try to implement the same scenario so that you will be used to what is the stage, what is the step, right? and how we can call the steps and stages and how the execution is happening on the record level. Everything you can get an idea. Then once you get the idea, tomorrow I can give you the homework. But practice whatever I have explained, that thing has to be practiced today. If you have an interaction, if you have an interaction flow, interaction step, in that case, if you have an interaction step, in that case, if you need a user input, you can assign to the user. You can assign to the user. Now, if you go here, one of the interactive step, if this interactive step is required the user input, right? Whereas a background, it does not require a user input. Only for the user, only for the interactive, if you want the user to be performing something, if you want user to be performing something, then you can give that specific user or else you can give the admin user here. And also whatever I have explained today, 
Along with that, practice the trial head also. There is a basics of the orchestration and there is a one of the trial head module is there where you need to build the flow orchestration. So I would suggest you implement that same flow orchestration, whatever the trial head is explaining. It. So get today you have to practice more on to the orchestration so that you will be used to the stage, reps, user, all these things. Okay, any questions? Fine. So what are the left for today that we will discuss tomorrow? Yes, Venkat, Venkatesh. Layout, what do you mean by layout? It's up to the developer. In the real time, we mostly go for a auto. Now, if I go for here, now in the real time, see the reason I'll tell you that we can easily identify the developers whether the person is already having experience in the flow or not. Whoever does not have an experience, what they will do is they will go for a free form so that they can see all the elements here. So whoever is used to be flows or whoever know what are the things are used to be, they can go for an auto layout. In the real time, whoever is an experienced person, those are everybody goes with the auto layout. 